Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now a while ago my sister asked me to put together a PC so that she could get started with editing for her YouTube channel. Now what I did was uh, put this together out of mainly spare parts that I had lying around which consisted of an older i7 as well as an RX 5500 XT graphics card. Now that was probably the newest part about the PC but it's a nice entry level GPU that seems to do fairly well so I thought that was the best way to go. Now, the PC did start to have a few issues, and well, today I decided to see if we could resolve these. So what's wrong with your computer? Keeps freezing. Well, I would take it back to whoever built it. Yeah, I know. Terrible job. Mm. So immediately, I went into the BIOS and noticed that the CPU temperature was way too high. I mean, it was idling at around 65 degrees, which certainly isn't good. I then replaced the thermal paste, and tried again reseating the CPU of course and again the same thing occurred it wasn't idling as hot it was about 60 but under stress well the PC started to freeze and crash so I had pretty much found the source of my issues I came to the conclusion that we would need to replace the CPU cooler because it just wasn't good enough for the i7-860 that was in the system. It was one of those low profile Intel ones from a newer CPU generation. And so it wasn't much good for this old quad core. Now I didn't have another cooler lying around so I thought we might as well swap out the entire motherboard bundle, get her onto a slightly newer generation because I then plan to upgrade the CPU to an i7 for her later down the line. So what I thought I'd do would be to switch to an 1150 socket. Um, Luckily I have a motherboard lying around and uh, an i5-4460 as well. Sophie, are you okay with this i5-4460? <laughs> I have no idea what you just said to me, so yeah, go for it. <laughs> Let's go. What I'm going to do now then is uh, just talk you through the swapping out process. We're just going to change things over and then see what our temperatures are like afterwards and of course check whether or not the PC still works. So when I said that Sophie's PC was made up of spare parts, I really meant it. I figured that the i7-860 would be perfect as it was still a quad-core chip and when it worked, it worked fairly well in Premiere Pro. The new bundle should also do okay, but upgrading to an i7 later on will help with CPU intensive tasks thanks to the extra threads. Swapping out a motherboard bundle can be more inconvenient than building a new system sometimes if your cables are managed in a specific way to suit the previous board, like they are here. Nonetheless, the first step will always be the same. Removing the graphics card first is the only way to go, and detaching the power cable from it is a must. The 5500 XT is one of my favourite budget gaming cards at the moment, and for my sister's needs, i.e. playing The Sims, it does just fine. Next, we're going to disconnect all the power cables that run from the PSU to the motherboard, as well as any cables from the case. For example, the USB cable, audio cable and front panel cables. Any system fans will have to be unplugged too. Next up, there should be between six and nine motherboard screws to remove, which will probably look like this. Make sure to put these safely aside as the new motherboard can go in the case on the same standoffs. The old 1156 or 1156 board is still one I'll keep for other ventures, but I'll be investing in a better cooler that can keep the i7 at a better temperature. A beefy be quiet air cooler would probably do the trick here, I think. For now though, let's get the new board in. It's important to make sure that the aforementioned standoffs line up with the new motherboard's mounting holes, and if they don't, then a super cheap tool like this is perfect for undoing them and relocating them. It's a magnetized attachment for the end of a screwdriver that usually comes with new PC cases, but it can be found online for cheap. I'm not sure the exact name of it, I just call it a motherboard standoff screw thingy, but uh, yeah, it's not called that. Luckily, the standoffs are already in the right place for this new board. We just won't be using all of them as this new one is a little bit smaller in terms of the form factor. The motherboard can be sat on top of the standoffs ready to be screwed into position with the same screws we removed earlier. 
It's then just a matter of putting all the cables back into the right places, including the case and power cables. Luckily, most of this motherboard's connectors are in a similar position to the old one, but the audio header is annoyingly a bit close to the PCI Express slot, which means that the cable sort of trails across it. It's long enough to be maneuvered around it though, so we should be able to put the GPU back in here without issues. Of course, just as removing the GPU was the first step, putting it back in is now the last step, apart from turning the machine back on, of course. This case is a little cramped, but for a system made up of a micro ATX motherboard and a small-ish graphics card, there is certainly enough space for suitable airflow. For anyone wondering, we've got a front and rear fan in here as well, both 80mm. Now, of course, it's time to turn the PC back on and see if it works. 32.5 degrees, that's much better than 70, and we've got the new CPU in there as well. New motherboard, new CPU, so everything should be fine. As I said before, this PC will be upgraded to an i7 a little later down the line, but for my sister's editing needs as well as her light gaming requirements, it'll be more than enough for now, especially with her 1080p monitor. This configuration can also handle more intensive games should she want to play them. I'll leave a link down below to her channel in case any of you want to check it out. She does uh, sewing and customises clothes and stuff like that and to be honest I never really knew she could do all that until she started the channel so it was a bit of a surprise to me but let's uh, take a quick look at some of the gameplay using the i5 and RX 5500 XT in combination. We'll also throw up the CPU temperature just to see how cool it stays under stress. So the CPU in some cases will be the bottleneck here and the RX 5500 XT whilst ideal for 1080p may limit you in some titles to medium or high settings. Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of those games that comes to mind. Other titles like GTA 5, The Outer Worlds and let's say Fallout 76 for example should all run absolutely fine and uh, other games that utilize the GPU more than the CPU will also be absolutely fine performance wise. It is just the fact that the i5 does lack hyper threading that lets it down. Now, I've tested both the 5500 XT and 4460 in the past. I used to have a 4460 myself in my personal setup, and to be honest, it was one of my favorite CPUs. It still is, to be honest, and on the used market, it can be found for a very, very good price. All that's left to say in this video then is thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, little bit of an upgrade video, I guess, perhaps a little bit of a diagnostic video too. Now I could have just replaced the cooler on this uh, motherboard, but I thought we may as well replace the whole motherboard because that gives us room to upgrade to an i7 for my sister in the future. And with the i7 on that uh, OG, Intel board the 1156 socket we couldn't really go anywhere in terms of upgrade so there we go if you enjoyed this one leave a like on it down below leave a dislike if you didn't subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one